you, David Tan here with another question bank question in topic 4.3. We're looking at polarization. Uh, so at the start of the question, it says state what is meant by polarized light. Uh, polarized light is light where the uh, light where the oscillation of the electric field is restricted to one dimension only. Basically what I mean by this is uh, light is the oscillation of two perpendicular fields, an electric field and a magnetic field. Uh, in polarized light, we restrict the electric field such that it can only oscillate uh, along one line, up and down, right to left, diagonally one way or the other, but you just choose one. Uh, normally unpolarized light uh, oscillates in all kinds of different combinations of dimensions simultaneously. Uh, but if we can restrict it to one dimension only, it becomes polarized. Now if we have polarized light with an intensity I0, we can shine it onto an analyzer. Uh, the transmission axis of the analyzer makes an angle theta with the direction of the electric field of the light, so we'll, uh, we'll rotate the analyzer around the light, making an angle theta. Calculate in terms of I0 the intensity of the light transmitted through the analyzer when that angle is 60 degrees. Uh, this comes to a simple relationship, which I think is in the data booklet. The intensity is equal to the original intensity times the square of the cosine of that angle, 60 degrees. Cosine of 60 degrees is one half. And if you square one half, you get one fourth. So that's I naught on four. What that tells us is that the intensity when we rotate the analyzer to be at 60 degrees to the light is a quarter of the peak intensity of the light. On the axis below, we're going to sketch a graph to show how the intensity varies with that angle. We already calculated that it's a quarter at uh, 60 degrees, but there's a couple of other key angles on this graph, uh, 90 degrees and 180 degrees. At 90 degrees, the polarizer is, or the analyzer is at a right angle to the light. So we have light oscillating left and right, say, and an analyzer going up and down. The light can't get through at all. So there's no intensity at 90 degrees. At 180 degrees, the light is going left to right, say, and the analyzer is open left to right. So the whole wave can get through. And the same thing at zero. The whole wave can get through. And so what we're going to expect to see is a kind of sinusoid. It's actually the graph of cosine squared. Drawing by hand, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. <clears throat> but it's a graph of this function. When cosine of 0, or when, when theta is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. We get a maximum. When cosine is, is 180, when theta is 180, cosine is negative 1, but you square it, so we get a maximum again. And when theta is 90, cosine of 90 is 0, so we get a minimum. Part C, outline how polarizing sunglasses reduce glare from a reflecting surface. So say we have like a puddle in the road, and we have light from the sun striking that puddle. And this is unpolarized light, so it's oscillating up and down, left and right, side to side, side to side. Oh, that's ugly. Let's start over. Up and down, left to right, side to side, side to side, every which way. And it's going to reflect off of the puddle. When light reflects off a surface, it can become polarized in the same plane as that surface. So if we strike a horizontal surface, the light can become horizontally polarized. The remaining uh, polarizations will be transmitted through into the puddle. So the light coming off the puddle is polarized. That means if we don't want to see that reflection, if we don't want to see that glare, we just need to wear sunglasses that are vertically polarized. And that means that the reflection is not going to get through the glasses. So we just need to put this into words. When light reflects, it can become polarized.
If the reflection is off of a horizontal surface, will uh, produce horizontally polarized light. So therefore, vertically polarized glasses will block horizontal reflections like glare. Okay, so three key points there. The light coming off of the reflection is going to be horizontally polarized. Therefore, we need vertically polarized glasses to block that reflection, to block that glare. Just really quickly, I want to come over to the mark scheme to point something out to you. Part C, we see those same points in the answer, but also this. A word full marks for a clearly labeled diagram. Even full marks are available for that. So coming back to my answer, I just drew my diagram to help explain what I wanted to put into words. But if I put some labels in there, like unpolarized light, reflective surface or puddle, whoa, nothing. Polarized light, yada yada, you get the idea. Vertically polarized sunglasses, that could be enough for all three marks. In most explain questions, there aren't points explicitly awarded for diagrams, but diagrams can help you understand the words that you want to put together, and sometimes they can help you earn some credit.